I want to welcome everybody to the Unimpressed Podcast today. We have a guy calling in from Los Angeles, and his name is Jesse Heyman, and he is an oh. actor, and he is a creative guy. Welcome, Jesse. How are you doing today? Thank you. How are you doing today? I'm good, man. Great to I'm hear good. it. Thank you for having me on your show. Well, let's dig in. I kind of like interviewing people from the foundation up and kind of see how they tick and just, you know, what led you to being in L.A. currently and, you oh. know, what is your... What's your internal drive? Well, uh, ever since I was a little kid, I, I dreamt to, I was watching Back to the Future and I wanted to be that Michael J. Fox going in a time machine on an adventure, going to the future, going to the past, trying to figure out things. And I thought, well, the only way I can really do that is if I eventually make my, make my way out here to where all the, the movie studios are at and all the big time actors live and all in Los Angeles. So, uh, I uh, went to, you know, school, high school and college in Texas, took as many theater and creative arts classes that I could take, mostly concentrated on writing and like coming up with characters. And then when I graduated college in the year 2000, I moved from Austin, Texas to Los Angeles. My parents made me get a real job first, but then soon after that, I registered to become a, a background actor, an extra at Central Casting. And from there, my career just kind of took off. Being cast as an extra, I mean, how does that transition to a, a lead role? Well, it takes time and effort and lots of of perseverance and and being able to wake up at six you know be at the crack of dawn some days and get get down to a, a dingy studio and and stand in line with a bunch of other people that are known as extras and you got to stand in line and one line where they check your wardrobe and another line where they check your makeup and sometimes they'll apply makeup if it's set in a certain time zone or time period or time you're supposed to be wearing clothes that are set in these or something like that recently i worked on uh on the offer which was on uh paramount is about the making of the godfather series and uh, i had to be put into makeup and hair and costumes to make me look like i was you know around in in the 70s when i when i just arrived basically you know in la and it, it it's very uh very fun to kind of take a break from reality and become an actor and play a part in, in something that when you're when you're there doing or making the the show it doesn't feel like that special but when you when you see the final production you see yourself on screen it's very very cool you did a, a commercial that was a super bowl yes. commercial did you not what was I did. Uh, what was that what was that like doing a super bowl commercial it was very fun very very at at first nerve-wracking because the commercial was kissing a supermodel for as many seconds as, as as we could go for and the original uh thing said do you mind kissing a supermodel um and it's going to be seen by everyone you ever you've ever run into and i said yeah sure of course so i went to an audition and they had me for at first they had me kissing blow-up dolls and then the second audition they had me kiss a real person and she ended up being the stand-in for the supermodel that i kissed in the commercial and she said jesse you're the only kiss that i remembered uh which is very cool and then on the actual day i got to uh sit down in a studio with bar Raffaele, a supermodel and i got to kiss her 65 times and that that's a lot of kissing <laughs> 65 times yeah 65 Jesus. times and, and you were uh, counting, huh? well i wasn't counting the the people that were they were making the commercial were counting and uh, i didn't even know it was 65 until they sent they sent me to the today show to to promote the uh, commercial and i got to sit on a couch with matt lauer and talk to him about kissing barry raffaele and he, well, you know how things went with him but <laughs> but but uh it's uh definitely a a, a career changing and life-changing moment for me i went from being in the background to uh, being in the foreground, very, very featured uh, and in like the second quarter or the first quarter of the Super Bowl, it aired and over, they said it made 1.1 billion impressions that in that one commercial, which is like more than like a day of hamburgers sold at McDonald's, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What was that like after that experience? Uh, it was very, very crazy. My life was crazy. I kept going 
on these. They kept sending me on like red eye flights back and forth from LA to New York to do interviews. I got to go meet like Jenny McCarthy and people like that and got to do like shows that I like to the Tonight Show with Jay Leno. I got to go on. That was actually my my second time on the Tonight Show. I had been on the Tonight Show two years prior because uh, a fan of mine from Sweden posted a video online on YouTube called Deeming Me the World's Greatest Extra. And because of that, that video went viral on YouTube, got over 4 million hits. They had me on The Tonight Show. I think it was April 11th, 2011 was my first appearance on, on uh, The Tonight Show. It's very memorable. I, I remember the date, you know. And it was just really cool. It was like one of those dreams that I made. I set when I first came to L.A. was one of them was to appear on The Tonight Show. And I achieved that dream right there. That's it. And, you know, talking about these goals, come off that high of doing these things, what what is next? I mean, how do you find your path? Well, it's very uh, tricky in L.A. There are a lot of times when you do feel like there's nothing for you out here. There are definitely t- weeks and months that go by, sometimes between opportunities or between gigs, and you feel like, uh-oh, I'm struggling now. What do I do? But, unfor- but fortunately, there's a lot of uh, jobs you could do out here when you're not acting that'll keep you uh, kind of trained and fine tuned as an actor. So like at first I was a for a while there I was a Lyft driver and uh, I would take people you know like a Lyft driver does anywhere take takes people to the airport and takes people to the wherever they're going at, out. Uh, but what I would do is I would study the characters and study the uh, the personalities of the people that I would pick up. Sometimes I would study. But they had a different accent or they had a different way of talking or a different way about them. I would study my, my customers so that when I get an opportunity to uh, audition for a, a TV show or a film and they need to play a certain type, I can kind of reference my customers. What type of gigs are you casting for today or trying out for today? Well, none today. I, I, I saw an uh, posting that I was when, going well, when I say when I say today in this it, sure. I'm not today literally but in this current time or okay. what gigs are you looking at It sounds crazy but I'm actually I'm submitting my car to be in in TV and film right now cuz I don't have like a very unique car I have a very plain car a Toyota Corolla but they they look for your car to be on TV and right now if you watch the the TV show Shrinking that's on Apple TV, you'll see my car on the street half the time that they show street scenes in that, in that show. So it's, I, I'm looking for opportunities in, in any way I can. I, I, I'm very, every opportunity that, that is presented to me, I, I, I take seriously and consider. I'm also, um, I'm attached to a film that's going to at some point shoot in Iceland, but we haven't uh, set a date for that. And what film is that? Right now, it doesn't have a title. It's untitled, but it's uh, it's it's gonna it's gonna take place, uh, like I said, in Iceland, and it involves uh, a wedding, and I get to be someone who's in the in the wedding party, and uh, it's kind of like an independent features i've done an independent feature in the past called the jerk theory that came out in like 20 2006 2007 maybe i was i got to go to utah and film a whole film for like two weeks and or three weeks in salt lake city area it was very cool that was a really great project for me because i got to act uh, and speak on a film for for the majority of the film and be a, a main character of the film whereas majority of my career has been in the background not in a non-speaking manner not not talking at all some of these things how do you you know what's your daily life like out there in la i mean what do you do i mean you're you look like you're maybe under 30 surprisingly i'm actually about to turn next month i turn 45 but i yeah i do that the the fact that you think i look under 30 that's the reason I'm still acting because I I have this uh, I have a, a a rare condition called Klinefelter syndrome, which just means that I have I was born with extra chromosomes. It leads me to looking young and kind of coming off as awkward sometimes. So it really helps with the acting because it seems like that all you see on TV these days are awkward characters getting into weird situations and having to deal with them. You know, it's kind of it, kind of, it seems like that's you know you know apart from the normal lawyer shows and doctor shows and all the things going on you know the reason that you watch some shows is because of how quirky the characters are. Right? now your parents have something similar was this something in your family no, at all no 
Not really. Uh, as far as I know, I'm the only uh, very creative person in my family. Uh, my my parents were, my mom was a speech therapist and pathologist in schools. My dad was a, a market researcher uh, and uh, they're both retired now. My brother is a, is a scientist. He, he studies worms. His wife does like, he works at Harvard. She works at MIT. They have very smart, very smart family there. Uh, I think, I, you know, I have cousins and I have one cousin is out here and he's working at CAA but he's he's an agent he's not a talent for some reason I, I just found the 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 bug and whatever the the creative juice is definitely throw flow through me I've been creative writing all my life and coming up with crazy ideas for things and so I just I just happen to uh find that it, it makes me happy when I have to come up with the character for myself or for someone else now the the stuff you write about uh-huh where does that come from <laughs> I have no idea sometimes sometimes it's based on what something that I'm experiencing or some things will just come straight out of thin air to me like the other day I had an idea for a for a show or maybe a, a, a movie or something where I don't know if you ever seen the show on Netflix it's called Black Mirror and they have like every episode is like a new idea of something that might be possible in the future or some some technology or some kind of something that that kind of has a dark tone to it but also comedic in some ways like you know the, there was one a really big episode about like how obsessed everyone is with their social media and how whether or not they get enough likes or smile or you know people interested in your in your stories my idea was like something like you could put a, a beanie on and it, and it would somehow you could travel with the beanie on it will take you to like it's like a transport you know they, they're all the star trek transport but you can just all you have to do is put a beanie on and it'll take you somewhere. what do you think about the other side you tap into the other side what do you mean the other side i'm not i'm not very religious in my in, i mean I, I i respect everyone's uh beliefs and 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 right and uh, to believe in whatever they let whatever they believe in but i i'm not really uh i i i don't really uh the whole fight believe in certain things. I think we come from Mars more like, er, er, not Mars, beyond Mars. More. So you believe in ancient civilizations? Uh, well, ancient or future, yes. Future, yes. So what is your, what's your belief on ancient civilizations? Uh, I think... For, you know, I think that they, they're they out there. There's they're, they're ancient to us, but they're still in existence. And I believe that, that I've been on Earth before. Like, maybe not me personally but i feel like like some my soul has been on earth before like i i i feel like anything that i for some reason i feel like whatever you're afraid of in this life if, if you have any fears it's something that has affected you in a previous well what are your fears well i have a i have a, a fear of heights sometimes i have a fear of i can't sometimes i can't walk on bridges uh i uh, sometimes I, when, like, my fear of heights is so, is so bad that, like, I'll be driving on the road and I'll see someone washing windows on a, on a, or, or on a, up on a crane and I'd get, I'll get anxious for them even though I'm not experiencing it myself. Or I, I have to stay to the middle of a freeway or I have to be, uh, drive, sometimes I drive, I don't even go on the freeway, I'll just drive on the, on the side street even though it takes me a long place to get, long time to get somewhere. I just feel that I try to do things, uh, Safe, as safely as possible in this life so i'm not whatever i'm for some reason i i fear falling and and and, and obviously uh whatever you know everything nowadays now i nowadays i'm working as a security guard as a side job and so i'm always worried that someone's going to bring a gun to my entrance or to my gate or, and i'm going to be forced to to tackle someone who may cause harm try to cause harm to others so i just I kind of have fear, but I'm also prepared to deal with whatever comes. <laughs> You're prepared to deal with whatever. What makes you feel like you've been here before? Um, it just like it seems like I ha I get all these thoughts in my head, or I'm not sure where the thoughts come from. Like I like maybe they're a, re a recollection from another another time or another place, or like I feel like I 
I have explanations for things or feelings about things that, that maybe are above other people's thinking. Like, I, I think that we should have a lot more uh, attention on how much people care or don't care for certain things. I have zero tolerance for people that don't accept people for who they are and accept people for how they want to live their lives. I, I, I cannot not, I still can't believe how many people, how petty uh, humans are to each other, you know, and, and I think we might be the most violent species in the universe. And that's why we're, we're left alone. I think we are in contact with other places, uh, other, other beings, other planets, other societies, but they don't get involved with our personal uh, issues because it's not their business to deal with. And we have to deal with our own issues, but I'm not sure we're, if we're ever going to get to a, a world peace or something that peaceful enough for them to come, come visit us. Well, I think things are about to change. And if you think about perpetuation and negativity, uh-huh. right? And something you said earlier about certain tone, I, I think you're a person that can recognize different types of tone. Yeah. And I, I'll just blindly ask you this question. Okay. Because I think I know the answer. What percentage of the tone on Netflix shows are dark? I mean, it seems like uh, probably over 70% of them. Yeah, 70%. Exactly yeah. right. Probably maybe 80. Positive shows on there as well. I mean, I'm not saying there's not positive shows on there, and I'm not trying to pin you in a corner. Okay. But if, if you look at this as an experiment and you look at how the perpetuation and negativity, you know, we get up in the morning, we hear an alarm clock. So you think here and the buzz going off at 7 a.m. in the morning is positive. Yeah, I do, because it, <laughs> it, it, I think it is positive because it, it, it confirms you're still alive for the next day. Like, I mean, I, we should be well, happy. Jesse, that, you would be. We should be happy that we wake up each day because based on how, how things are in the in the world right now, you have to be happy to just be appreciative that you're, you're alive to live another day, you know? Well, I, I believe that 100%. I believe the best thing about life is yeah, life. Of course. So I believe that 100%. I, but if you think about the rationale of that, yeah. as soon as we get up in the morning, you know, we have these noises, we have, you know, we see news that may, usually news is bad. So we start off right. with this negative type of energy. Right. So if you perpetuate negative energy continuously, continuously, right? And then you're running, you're reading data at Netflix wow. and majority of majority of the population responds to negativity more than they respond to positivity True, there's a reason that the tone of most of those shows are dark because it's, okay. it's a percentage game but all the but majority of all those shows we have to recognize it's fiction it's not it's know, based but it's based but, on ideas that are in the real world, but the majority of them are, are meant for entertainment, not to be taken seriously. Yeah, you understand that. I understand right. that. Okay. But law of attraction. Law well, of attraction sure. doesn't understand that. Okay. And and that's that's something I don't think we look at as human beings to, to make a change because, you know, if you looked at creating positivity in kids, uh huh. And I and I have this thing of of, and I'll talk about the subconscious, but you've looked at, there's a difference between a, a kid is born into this world and the way we start managing these kids in a way, it, it, we're not creating confidence for kids. Okay. So if you want to change the world, you have to create confidence. So if, say, if a kid approaches something that he's never done before, obviously sure. he's going to have fear, but instead of approaching it, saying, can I do this? Will I succeed? You know, does this work for me? Instead of questioning this questioning this opportunity, the response should be, I can do this. I will succeed. Mm -hmm. This is for me. So if you I, change, I, change that mindset, if you change that mindset, you know, a thousand years ago and people were trained that way and people were trained that I way think, from a positive end, I think tone, tone of some of the content that's created would be different. Sure. Sure. But I, I think it, it's also important to teach kids to be open-minded and open heart, face things with an open heart and open eyes and, and, and seeing the world, not always for what it's portrayed to be on, on Netflix, whatever show, you know? Yeah. And not, and also to like even the like not it's not even it's not even just Netflix if if a kid is tunes in and his parents are watching a a C-SPAN of a ascetic 
sent a trial of some some you know social network guy or or the way that they you know blast they they keep yelling at people with to try to get explanations about them like the, for the reasons that they do certain things you know it's just the way that they're conducting business it's not it's, it, it i don't know i'm just saying it we need to keep uh kids thinking in the in a uh, that the world is still theirs to to change to change the world well, what, what what people don't realize is, and I'm trying to get to this point, what people don't realize is, and you talk about the tone of some of the Netflix shows. Right. People will naturally, by law of attraction, will be attracted to that tone because that's what they're used to. Because what happens is... When you're born into this world, your your subconscious is like a computer and your subconscious is being programmed with whatever information you take in. Your subconscious is taking that information in, taking that information in, and that's data. So whatever right. your environment, whatever environment you're in, you're building your subconscious as a young person person. Okay. Then when you get to a certain point in life, you start responding to things with your unconscious bias. And that is a That's natural true. response. That is a natural response based on your subconscious. And however heavy your subconscious is programmed, it makes it harder for people to get to consciousness. So if you never get to consciousness and we are perpetuating a certain tone that may lean to a darker place, right? When you but create content in the world and you want to naturally attract these people because their programming of their subconscious is somewhat negative, they're going to be, because of their unconscious bias, they're going to be naturally attracted to a darker tone of content are coming at me kind of feeling like a dark tone right now it seems like you came to the on to do this interview with some kind of agenda of your own there's and no and i'm just trying- going i'm just going on what you told me i just you just mentioned tone and i think you're a very intelligent guy Okay. I think you're a highly intelligent person. Okay. And I'm just trying to dig in to some of these responses and just see okay. where this conversation could go. Because I'm okay. the most positive person on the face of the planet. You know, I'm trying to change the world. I just want people to understand if you can understand these things. Yeah. It makes you look at things a lot different, you know, because if you understand okay. that and you can isolate these situations, you can you can change and fix these things for yourself at Still, the end of the day. Because mm-hmm. there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff that we do naturally without really recognizing it or or out without really relishing it we're doing these things because of how our subconscious is programmed okay. so if people could understand that more it's going to help the world and you sure can change is. humanity you, you know what i mean yeah that's why i'm oh, talking i hope about i hope it. we can i hope we can change humanity because we need all the all the things we can to change the way things are going right now yeah because i think you got and a very positive just, outlook oh things. definitely I, I'm definitely a positive person, and I mean, you know, and, and that's and rare. I want, I want. Well, I mean, it, it shouldn't be rare. It should be every. I hope. I wish more people were positive. I wish more people wanted world peace and wanted, wanted, you know, to accept everyone for who they are and not, not try to push their agenda on people. You know, just because that's what they think, or you know, you know. So I, I hope there could be as much positive, as much positivity going on in the world as there is. Unfortunately, so much negative go- negativity going on. I think you're in a space that kind of, in a way, instead of so, let's say if if let's say if society looked at you right and they said, uh-huh. okay, what you know what's going on here? You know, I see it as intelligence, and maybe there's a right. deeper dive to understand you know where your mindset is and why your mindset is positive. You you know what I mean? Like we don't look at things, uh, we don't look at that piece and say, hey, let's dig into this piece and understand why it is positive and maybe we can translate that to other people. Well, yeah, I think your positivity basis is based on what you believe from the get-go. I think it's based on also how you're brought up or who you're brought up by or what, you know, your, your, your family or your the way that your family conducts itself or, you know, if your family is functional or dysfunctional, that and that also and then how close you are to I think that, yeah. that and, and, and how much you you could you agree with how your family brought you up. Because sometimes there's a lot of dysfunction because people are raised one way and then they see how the world works and they want to change their their way of, of living from the way that their parents come up and that that's where all of this is this dissertation comes off and um you know there's a lot of people that that 
that grow up thinking that in the religion that they're they've been taught, that's the religion that matters. That's the religion that that you should be following. Where and they don't all respect all other religions or other ideologies in the world. You know, obviously, you know, and and when we're all you know talking to or praying to the same kind, same exact or if you believe in God. Yeah, I mean, I think there's I think there's one God, and I think right. there's one narrative. Right. I think I think through time, people have carved mm-hmm. out pieces of what they thought God was and made it their own, you know, but at the end of the day, there's not, you know, 18, 20 people out there hanging out. You know what I'm saying? There's one energy. There's one source, sure, sure. you know? Yeah. So, I mean, I agree with that. And think about what, you know, unconsciously, unconsciously, you think about what you just said right? about kids growing up. I mean, that's basically what I'm breaking down through your subconscious. Okay. And if, and if and you know what I'm saying? That's basically what I'm breaking down because that's the programming of your subconscious. And I, what I'm that's trying true. to say is, well, yeah, what I'm trying to say is people, if people understand, understood it from that perspective, you could change a lot of lives, you know, because it's not because that information is not taught. We just wonder why. And then we use those then we use those situations that we experience growing up as an excuse right. for our life. But if you understood it, it's not an excuse for your life. You know exactly what it is. Sure. And maybe that and maybe that makes you um, have a better mindset on how to handle it. I think it definitely helps with the uh, with certain social situations where if you are confronted with with a, a different person or from a different completely walk of life and different way of living, it's it's how you how we conform ourselves to be able to have a, a normal conversation with anybody. Well, and I think you got to be able to read the person and understand the person. Well, and I I, I I have to do that in my current career as a as a security guard for major sporting events like I worked at the last two Super Bowls and uh, I also work at major con- look I work. I didn't work at the exact concert, but I worked at the venue recently where Dave Chappelle was there for a, for a comedy act, and someone like attacked him on. St- I wasn't I wasn't there for that act incident, but I was I've I've worked at that venue and I I worked with the security team that let that person slip by, get by, you know. When um, but but I'm I'm just saying that we have we unfortunately are in a business where we have to quick judge everyone because we have to make sure that everyone if someone is like over over beveraged or or uh, seems like they are if they're taking pictures of like the security protocol or, or, or doing something that comes off as suspicious, we have to report to our superiors for them to decide whether or not we take action further or we just let the person go by. You know? So I work in a business where it's, it's funny because I went from a business where I'm, I'm still an actor. I'm still acting as much as I can. But when I'm an actor, I'm being stereotyped as a geek or a nerdy guy or, or a white guy or I look like a guy that's never, never really had a girlfriend or never really done well in, in, in terms of, <laughs> in terms of social, you know, probably yeah. always the, the last one picked for a sports team and that kind of stuff, always being bullied into something or that. And it's one from that to a career where I'm, I'm now the one who is the authority at, for some events and I have to, I am actually a I'm supervisor now. So I have to, I have to watch my staff and make sure that they're following our, our policies and our rules and how we conduct screenings on people and making sure everyone is, we have to screen bags. We have to make sure that they, they're following the policies. There's a, a huge thing going on right now with queer bag policy where if you don't have a queer bag, they're going to make you check in your bag a locker where you and we get a lot of arguments you want me to leave my bag with it in a, in a dirty locker or anything and i mean people just don't want to even though we're following we're just following procedures there people have a hard time trusting other people right now and that that's something we have to fix up we have to change because trusting and acceptance is, is a lot there's a lot right there do you do any content at all or anything like that i used to do content when periscope was a huge was a was a trending uh, video platform. I was I, I used to almost on the daily uh, record a Periscope and do a bit. Sometimes I, I do it with a with a friend or I just do it with myself. And I I enjoyed uh kind of documenting my life as I lived it because uh, I at that time I I was still full time acting and I was, but there was a lot of downtime and I wanted people to see what it's like 
when you're an actor, when you have a lot of downtime, what do you do with your what do, you do with your days and how you fill the time in between gigs? Uh, nowadays, I don't really do as much social media. I have a TikTok. I have you know I'm on TikTok. I'm on Instagram. Uh, I paid for the for the Twitter verification, like because I want it. It's important for my my image as an actor, not necessarily because I you know follow Elon Musk or because I'm, you know, wanting his approval or anything like that. I, I just wanted to be visible. And But what's funny is, like, I, I found, and because I ha- I got verified on Twitter, I, I, I have, I'm in their, like, program. They, you can change the color of the Twitter button on your, on your phone. So now I have it as a red button, so a blue button. That's just me. <laughs> nice. Well, well, Jesse, I think you should do more content. I like your, okay. your take. And I, th- I think you could be, you know, someone of inspiration to well, a different narrative. And, you know, you should put that out there more. I, I, I'm i definitely uh, considering it. I've actually, what do you think of, I, I, I've come up with a name if I do start a podcast. What do you think of Inches from Glory? What do you think of that? I like that. Yeah. I, I like would, that. would kind of be like half sports and half whatever I'm, whatever I Feel like talking about you know you're trying to represent yourself in a way well it, it like i said it's so it, it's mostly going to be a, my i'll talk a lot about sports so i like like football and i like baseball and soccer and it seems like uh when in both football and soccer you could be inches from sporting or inches from changing the first footballs it played on a you know football field with feet and the inches matters so if like you're if you're on a on a limp, i like the olympics so like when they're track, you know, tra- running on a track or something, or they could be inches from victory or inches from defeat, you know, just that, that feel, that feel like. And the same thing can be true about personal achievements, trying to reach for dreams, and how how close we feel like we we're close to achieving one goal, where another goal feels like it's out of reach for now, but maybe on the back burner. So I just like inspiring people to follow whatever the dreams are. You know, hopefully their dreams are mostly positive, not dark tone. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope you just understood my angle on that. I'm just trying to I shine did. some light, you I know, because that's something people don't realize, you know. Right. And, and I, and I hope just, you understand, you recognize my own tone when in response, because I, I, I appreciate your, your, your platform and what you're, what you're trying to say, and what, and I respect you, and I, I appreciate for you wanting to talk with me and, and share your ideologies and, and your, your beliefs, so I, so I can retrain and, and consider them more as I go on in my own life. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Well, it was good talking to you, Jesse. I appreciate you coming on and. And the man who kissed Bar Raphael 65 times. 65 times, yes. <laughs> and, yeah, I appreciate you coming on the show. And my name's John Edmonds Cosma, the CEO of Bang Productions. Oh.